Dear students, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Ammal Mahalanyam Engineering College, Kohil Bindi. I am going to discuss the uh, subject Engineering Thermodynamics uh, through the video lecture series. And this subject Engineering Thermodynamics, it is in the third semester Mechanical Engineering. And uh, it is a basic and important subject for Mechanical Engineering students. Uh, the the in the future the subjects in the future like thermal engineering heat and mass transfer uh, gas dynamics everything depends on engineering thermodynamics and uh, the knowledge of engineering thermodynamics if you do well in engineering thermodynamics understand well engineering thermodynamics you can do better the in future in the third year or uh, third year fourth year engineering program the subject related with thermal engineering and the entire subject I divide into 10 modules. This is the first module. So where we discuss the basics of thermodynamics and zeroth law of thermodynamics. And the, this is lecture number 101, the first module, first lecture. And the topic for today's discussion. So we'll introduce the thermodynamics. We identify the applications of thermodynamics, we discuss the concept of continuum and we discuss macroscopic and microscopic viewpoints in thermodynamics. And we recap from the basics uh, what we studied at uh, school level or in the first year engineering program, the subject like physics, chemistry and mathematics. So in the physics you studied, if you remember you studied mechanics and the heat. Uh, the, uh, in the heat, you uh, studied about the thermodynamics laws, uh, specific heat, definition of heat. And in mechanics, the forces acting on the body, Newton's law, everything. And uh, in chemistry, the substance, the forms of body, forms of any matter and fuels in combustion. And in mathematics, simple arithmetic calculations integration differentiation so these are all the some of the topics which which are all required uh, for uh, understanding the engineering thermodynamics in a better way so if you uh, if you find time you refer the previous notes or previous books just to have a glance look at uh, look at the topics what i told and you have some familiarity on the topic so that we will introduce however i will introduce the subject from the basics and it will be useful to you to understand and if you follow the lectures and solve the problems whatever i give in the lecture series and definitely you will gain uh, confident on the subject for your better future and for the this lecture the learning outcome uh, we will define the student will be able to define at the end of the lecture the student will be able to define thermodynamics recognize the applications of thermodynamics Distinguish between macroscopic and microscopic approach. Identify the units of various quantities. So uh, for every lecture, at the end of every lecture, the le every lecture will be will be maximum of uh, 20 to 30 minutes. In 30 minutes le learning, at the end of 30 minutes, the student will be able to do all these things. That is what the learning outcome. And the engineering thermodynamics is defined uh, as a science of energy transfer and its effect on the physical properties of substances transfer of energy uh, we, we, we are familiar if you know if you if you talk about energy there, there is one law which is uh, which is immediately striking on your mind energy conservation principle energy neither be created nor destroyed it can be transferred from one form to another form energy transfer here so in thermodynamics, we'll be studying only about two types of energy. One is work and the heat. The transfer of heat into work or work into heat and its effect on the physical properties of the substances. So that is what we are going to discuss. That is what uh, the basic thermodynamics, the definition of the thermodynamics. So the science of energy transfer and its effect on the physical properties of the substance. The name thermodynamics emerges or stems from the Greek words thermi which means heat and dynamics means power. So the, it is also heat power. So the, uh, the power produced by heat or heat power. 
The term thermodynamics was first used in a publication by Lord Kelvin in 1849. And another interesting factor, the first thermodynamics book was written by uh, William Rankin in the year 1859. Uh, William Rankin is a professor of University of Glasgow. And these are all the last two more, they, they are the important factors, important uh, facts about the engineering thermodynamics. And when I introduce a new new scientist here in the subject, I will I will give some idea about the uh, the scientist. So he is Lord Kelvin, a Scottish mathematician and physics. So born William Thomson or Lord Kelvin. He, he is he lived between 1824 to 1907, was educated in, at the University of Glasgow and Cambridge. He was a professor of natural philosophy, that is physics in in nowadays, now, earlier it was called as natural philosophy at the University of Glasgow for 53 years. Kelvin was a pioneer in thermodynamics and electromagnetic theory and devised the temperature scale. There is a scale called uh, tem Kelvin scale for measuring the temperature. We will discuss later, Kelvin scale. And uh, William Rankin, uh, he lived between 1820 to 1872. Again, he was a Scottish mechanical engineer who also contributed to civil engineering, physics and mathematics. He was a founding contributor to the science of thermodynamics. He developed the Rankin scale, again a thermodynamic scale for temperature measurement. And it is not very popular. Rankin scale is not very popular as the Kelvin scale. Rankin developed a complete theory of steam engine. And uh, uh, steam engine and uh, I, actually, that is the basic for any uh, heat engine developments. So, William Rankin. And look at the devices. Look at the diagram. A cup of coffee at 70 degrees Celsius. It is it is uh, it is put on the to the environment at 20 degrees Celsius. Now there is heat transfer from the coffee from the vessel surface to the environment because of the temperature difference. You have a turbine. And the fluid is entering with the pressure P1 and temperature T1 and leaves with the pressure P2 and temperature T2. And there is some work produced. So the work W is given by the W is the work. And you look at a compressor, some refrigerant to the 134A, it is entering with the 160 kilopascal and leaves with the 1 megapascal higher pressure, it is compressed. And you lay, look at a home, a house. At the top of the roof, you have solar collector. There is some hot water generated using the solar collector. You have a heat exchanger, you have a pump, and you have the uh, cold water circulation, hot water circulation. And this is a fan, simple fan, which produces, which, circ which circulates the air with the higher kinetic energy. So electric power is given to the fan, and it circulates the air. And it is an automobile car running on the road with the power, with a certain power. And this is the cluster of cars running on the road. So it produces smoke, it produces heat, and it, it is driven with a certain speed and power. And the aeroplane is flying in the sky. It is also flying with some power and velocity. And you have the engine, uh, multi-cylinder engine, which is used in the automobile, which is cut section, which is running, it is producing power. It is a power, I mean, cryogenic refrigeration plant used for producing, uh, ref, I mean, uh, cooling effect for, for various activities. And this is a gas turbine or jet engine. You have a fan, compressor, compression chamber, turbine, and exhaust nozzle. The gases are leaving with the higher kinetic energy. The vehicle, the, I mean, the, the, the entire engine, jet engine is moving in the opposite direction. And it is a refrigerator. So inside the refrigerator, the temperature is lower than the atmospheric temperature. We preserve the food. And it is the outdoor unit of air conditioner. You have the compressor, condenser, all the devices. So which produces conditioned air. And this is the plant where the smoke is leaving to the atmosphere and the heat, hot smoke is led to the atmosphere. And it is a pump which produces, which produces delta pressure, pressure increase of high glow pascal and it is an electrical cooker which is cooking the food this is drying of your uh, cloth in the sunlight 
and it is the windmill which produces electricity using the kinetic energy of the uh, air. It is iron box which is used for pressing your dresses using the heat energy. Uh, heat is produced using the electric power and it is the computer which consumes power and uh, doing all the computer, computational calculations. So all these devices, one way or the other we are related with these devices, all these devices some process is taking place. Maybe some uh, some some pump pump turbine they produce or consume work. If you look at any of the devices, all the devices are uh, there is heat generated or heat absorbed. So the energy transfer taking place in all the devices. So that is what we are going to deal with the energy transfer in all those devices. How to calculate the energy device or how to calculate the amount of energy required to drive the device or amount of energy produced by the device. That is what the discussion of this subject. So as we told already, thermodynamics can be defined as a science of energy transfer. Now you can recognize what is energy transfer. By looking at all the devices, you can recognize what is energy transfer and its effect on physical properties of the substance. There is another definition. Thermodynamics is a branch of physical sciences that deals with relations between heat and other forms of energy such as mechanical, electrical and chemical energy and by extension of the relationship between all forms of energy. So it is thermodynamics giving the relationship between heat and other forms of energy. That is what the thermodynamics, that is another definition. And thermodynamics is a branch of physics that deals with heat and temperature and the relations to energy, work, radiation and other properties of the matter. So, uh, the all the definitions they are running around the energy transfer and its effect on the physical properties so the first definition it gives a clear picture so the it is the science of energy transfer and its effect on physical properties of the substance and in uh, in our thermodynamics we are going to use two approaches for our study one is macroscopic approach and microscopic approach first we take up the mic macroscopic approach uh, we know, we know all the substances, they are made up, made up of hundreds of millions of molecules. Any substance consists of large number of particles called molecules. The property of the substance depends on the behavior of the molecule. How the behavior, how the molecules are arranged, how the molecules are moving, uh, how the molecules are vibrating, all these things. The property depends on the, the depends on the behavior of the molecule. Macroscopic approach is concerned with the effect of actions of many molecules and the effect of effect can be perceived by the human sense. So, what we can see in our senses, what we can see, what we can feel, that is what the macroscopic approach. So, macroscopic approach is concerned with the effect of action of many molecules and these effects can be perceived by the human senses. So, the, in this approach, the behavior of the individual molecules are ignored. So, there is, there are in the molecules. We do not bother about the molecules and we, 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 concern, we are concerned with the, the collective behavior of the molecules. That is what the macroscopic approach and this approach is called as classical thermodynamics. And microscopic approach, so again, the substance consists of many molecules. Each molecule at a given instant has certain position, velocity, energy and these quantities change frequently due to collision. So, in the microscopic approach, the behavior of the substance is described by summing up the behavior of each molecule. So, for every molecule, for, for example, if you want to measure the velocity, we have to find out the velocity of individual molecules and we have to sum up, we have to add all the velocities and we have to find out the velocity of the entire substance, which is very difficult which is very, very difficult and this is not required at undergraduate level. So, this kind of approach is called as statistical thermodynamics and what we are going to uh, use is only macroscopic approach and this thermodynamics is called as classical thermodynamics. So, the microscopic approach we are not going to use in our discussion and uh, which is not uh, the concern of undergraduate, undergraduate level. And what is the difference between microscopic approach and macroscopic approach? So, in the macroscopic approach, it is also known as classical thermodynamics. The microscopic approach, it is also known as statistical thermodynamics. 
in micros macroscopic approach the analysis is in macroscopic approach requires simple mathematical formula whereas in the microscopic approach analysis in microscopic approach requires advanced statistical and mathematical methods macroscopic approach few properties are required to describe the system and in the microscopic approach large number of variables are required to describe this system so macroscopic approach is very simple quite simple and in microscopic approach it is highly complicated so the difference between macroscopic and microscopic approach and wherever you want to note down the information you can pass the video and note down the uh, information so this information difference between microscopic and macroscopic approach it is also important from the exam point of view and the concept of continuum again we recall there are number of molecules available in each substance the concept of continuum is a kind of idealization of the continuous description of matter where the properties of matter are considered as continuous function of space variable so what is space variable x and y they are the space variable so if you draw a, a plot x axis y axis that is what the space variable so we consider the matter as continuous that is what continuum we consider the matter as continuous so its substance as continuous uh, function of space when variable the concept of continuum assumes a continuous description of mass within the matter or system with no empty space instead of actual conglomeration of separate molecules so practically the molecules are there we do not separate the molecules we consider as a continuous the, mo the molecules are continuous in gas the atom of the gas are widely spaced but it is convenient to disregard the atomic nature of the substance and view it as a continuous and homogeneous matter that is what continuum so in the case in the case of gases the molecules are widely spaced the space between the molecules are more but still we consider this as continuous this idealization is valid as long as the size of the system is very large comparing with the size of the molecule so size of the system where we take a big thermodynamic system where the size of the molecule is negligible the continuum idealization follows allows us to treat the properties of point function and vary continuously without any jump or discontinuity so this idealization is required uh, for considering the properties of point function and the concept of continuum is used in macroscopic approach of thermodynamics and not in microscopic approach so continuum we consider uh, the in the macroscopic approach method we are using the concept of continuum so what is in general in nutshell in a single simple sentence what is continuum we consider the matter as continuous and we use the concept use the idealization for macroscopic approach of thermodynamics and it is not used in the microscopic approach of thermodynamics and uh, dimensions and unit next topic is dimension and unit uh, we all the uh, quantity we measure with the certain dimensions any physical quantity can be characteristic characterized by the dimensions the magnitude assigned to the dimensions is called as unit the dimensions are two one is primary or fundamental dimensions and another one is secondary or derived dimensions the primary dimensions are mass given by m length given by l time small t and temperature capital t as primary dimensions all the other dimensions like uh, velocity energy volume or secondary dimension they are derived from the, uh, the they are expressed in terms of the primary quantities so these are the primary quantities length symbol is l unit is mass ma m unit is m mass symbol is m unit is kilogram time symbol is small t unit is second and temperature uh, symbol is t and the unit is kelvin k is the kelvin and these are all the derived dimensions area meter square volume meter cube velocity meters per second acceleration meter by second square force in newton density kilograms per meter cube specific weight newtons per meter cube pressure newtons per meter square work and the energy joules heat transfer watts power w again watts 
the mass flow rate kilograms per second volume flow rate meter cube per second specific heat joules per kilogram kelvin specific enthalpy joules per kilogram specific entropy joules per kilogram kelvin and specific volume meter cube per kilogram and these are all the quantities these are all the quantities required in thermodynamics and you remember all the unit and of course when you solve the problem when you repeatedly uh, use the dimensions use the units you can remember but uh, in thermodynamics or in any general any engineering toy subject when you write a number when you calculate certain quantities always has the practice of writing the unit which is very important in engineering calculations and we have a reflection spot here we just recollect we 20 minutes what we discuss we just recollect we try to answer few questions here uh, first question is define thermodynamics you take few minutes time few few seconds time and you write write the answer for the question define thermodynamics So the right answer, the thermodynamics depend as the uh, science of energy transfer and its effects on the physical properties of the substance. So if we have written this, it is well and good. And uh, name few mechanical engineering systems where the concept of thermodynamics is applicable. So see, so you have seen lot of uh, uh, diagrams, uh, a lot of photographs about uh, the mechanical engineering devices. You can name few. In macroscopic approach, the matter is considered as dash and the behavior is behavior of the individual molecules is dash. You fill up the blanks. In macroscopic approach, matter is considered as continuous and the behavior of the individual molecules is neglected. So, continuous and neglected. And write the units of the following quantity. You can verify the answer. Force, Newton. Density, kilograms per meter cube. Specific weight, Newtons per meter cube. Specific heat, joules per kilogram Kelvin. And pressure, Newtons per meter square or Pascal. So, we stop here. And these are all the reference book I used for preparing the slides, Engineering Thermodynamics by P.K. Nag, Sengel and Bose Thermodynamics, Potter and Summerton Thermodynamics for Engineers, Joel Basic Engineering Thermodynamics, Rogers and Mahew Engineering Thermodynamics, R.K. Rajput Engineering Thermodynamics and P.L. Bellani Thermal Engineering. So, these are all the some of important books on uh, thermodynamics. Uh, you refer any of the book according to your convenience and you compare the video lectures with the uh, book and you can add whatever the point required. So, this is my address. I have my mail ID displayed here. If you have any queries, you can write to my mail ID. I will sincerely answer to your queries on the subject. And if you have any comments on the video, if any comments on the subject, you can also post the comments so that I will improve the video according to the requirement of the uh, uh, engineering undergraduate young under the second year students. So, thank you very much. We will meet again.